بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو دا کورس کمیونیکیشن تھیوریز ٹو ٹوڈے آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس ود یو ڈیفیوژن آف انوویشن تھیوری ان دس ٹاپک آئی ول ٹاک اباؤٹ دیٹ واٹ ڈز اٹ مین بائی دا ڈیفیوژن آف انوویشن تھیوریز اینڈ دیر آر ڈفرینٹ اسٹیجز آر کیٹیگریز وچ ہیو بین پرزینٹیڈ بائی ای ایم راگرس آئی ول ٹاک اباؤٹ اٹ ون بائی ون اینڈ دیر آر ڈفرینٹ فیکٹرز وچ انفلوئنس ایڈاپٹیشن آف انوویشن آئی ول ڈسکس اٹ ود یو اینڈ دیر آر ڈفرینٹ لمیٹیشنز آف دس تھیوری وی ول ڈسکس اٹ Uh, and uh, uh, there are different uh, uh, approaches which make innovation spread uh, I will discuss with you later and E.M. Rogger also presented different qualities uh, that determined the variations in the adaptation of a new products I will discuss with you uh, later so come to the point that what does it mean by the diffusion of innovation theory Basically, this theory was uh, developed by E. M. Rogger. Uh, he developed this theory in 1962. This theory is uh, one of the oldest uh, social science theories. It is uh, uh, originated in communication to explain how, over time, uh, an idea or any products gains common momentum, or it diffuses, or spread out. through a specific population or a social system. Uh, the result of this diffusion is that people is a part of social system. They usually adopt a new idea, a uh, behavior or a product. Adaptation means that uh, a person does something differently than what they had previously. Like they purchase or use a new product or they perform a new behaviors. The, the key to adaptation is that the, the person must perceive the idea. He must perceive the behavior or product as new as an innovative. It is through this uh, the diffusion is possible. Uh, diffusion or uh, the adaptation of a new idea or behavior Uh, it doesn't happen simultaneously in a social system. It is a process uh, whereby some people uh, are more active to adopt the innovation than other people. Mostly uh, researchers have found that people uh, who adopt an innovation early uh, have different characteristics than people who adopt an innovation later. Uh, when promoting an innovation to uh, a target population, it is important to understand the characteristic of the target population that will help our adaptation of the uh, innovation system. Uh, so this was uh, uh, a little bit information about the diffusion of innovation theory. Next is the categories or stages of diffusion of innovation theory. There are five established adopter categories uh, like uh, the innovators, early adopters, uh, number third is the early majority and the fourth point is the late majority and the last uh, stage or category is the laggards. So I will talk about it later. While the majority of the general population tends to fall in the middle categories. It is necessary to understand the characteristic of the target population. When promoting an innovation, uh, there are different uh, str uh, strategies used to appeal to different uh, adopter categories. So the first category is the innovators. Innovators are those people who want to be the first to try the innovation. They are, uh, they are entrusted in new ideas. These people are, uh, they are willing to take risks and are often, uh, they are the first to develop new ideas. And very little if anything needs to be done to appeal to this population. The second category is 
the early adopters the early adopters are those people who represent opinion leaders they enjoy leadership roles and embarrass change opportunities early adopters are ready they are already aware of the need to change and so they are very comfortable adopting to new ideas they don't need information to convince them to change uh, the third stage is the early majority early majority are those people who are rarely leaders but they do adopt new ideas before the average person like they said that they typically need to see evidence that innovations work before they are willing to adopt it a strategies to appeal to this population include uh, success stories and evidence of the innovations effectiveness the four category are the four stage is the the late majority late majority are those people who are skeptical of change and will only adopt an innovation after it has been tried by the majority a strategies to appeal to this population include uh, information on how many other people have tried the innovation and they have adopted it successfully the last stage are the categories is uh, the laggards laggards are those people uh, they are bound by the traditions and are very conservative people they are very skeptical of change uh, and they are the hardest group to bring on board uh, strategies to appeal to this population include uh, statistics fear appeals and pressures from people in the in the other adopter groups and next slides uh, i'm going to discuss with you uh, the five main factors that influence adaptation of an innovation each of these factors is uh, at play to a different extent in the five adopter categories the main five factors uh, is the the relative advantage uh, the compa the compatibility the complexity triability and observability the uh, relative advantage is the degree to which an innovation is seen is better than the idea program or any product it replaces the second uh, main factor is the compa compatibility compatibility is how extensive the innovation is with the values experiences and the needs of the potential adopters the third factor is the complexity complexity is that how difficult the innovation is to understand or how difficult the innovation is to use it the fourth uh, factor is triability triability is the extent to which the the innovations can be tested are experimented with uh, before a commitment to adopt is made the last factor is observability observability is the the extent to which the innovation provides tangible results and next slides uh, i'm going to discuss with you the limitations of diffusion of innovation theory there are different or several limitations of this theory which include like uh, uh, the first i i could say the first limitation is that much of the evidence for this theory including uh, the adopter categories didn't originate in public health and uh, it was not developed to explicitly apply to adaptation of new behaviors or health innovations uh, the next limitation uh, you could say that it doesn't foster a particular participatory approach 
to uh, adaptation of public health program it also works better with adaptation of behaviors rather than uh, cessations or prevention of behaviors the next limitation is that it doesn't take into an account an individual's resources or social support to adopt the new behavior or an innovations. This theory has been used successfully in many fields including communication, uh, agriculture, public health, uh, criminal justice, social work and marketing. In public health Diffusion of innovation theory is used to accelerate the adaptation uh, of important public health programs that typically aim to change the behavior of a social system. For example, uh, an intervention to address of, uh, a public health pro problem is developed and the intervention is to promote it to people in a social system with the goal of adaptation the most successful adoption of a public health program results from understanding the target population and the factors influencing uh, their rate of adaptation next uh, i will talk about and discuss with you uh, different approaches uh, which make innovation uh, spread. Diffusion of innovation takes uh, a radically different approach to most other theories of change. Like instead of focusing on uh, persuading innovations to change, it sees change as, uh, uh, as being primarily about the evaluation uh, or a product and behavior. So they become better fits for the needs of individuals and groups. In diffusion of innovation, it is not people who change, but the innovation themselves. There are different uh, questions usually people ask you that uh, why do certain innovations spread more qu quickly than others? Uh, they can also ask you that why do others fail? So diffusion scholars recognize five uh, different uh, uh, approaches that determine the success of an innovation. Like the first is the, the relative advantage. Uh, the second is the uh, com uh, compatibility with the existing values and practices. The third is the uh, simplicity and ease of use. Uh, the fourth point is the triability. And the last is the observable results. So I will discuss with you first the, the relative advantage. Relative advantage is the degree to which uh, an innovation is perceived as better than the idea it uh, supersedes by a particular group of users. Measured in terms that matter to those users like uh, economic advantage, social prestige, uh, convenience or satisfactions. The greater the pursued relative advantage of an innovation, uh, the more rapid its rate of adaptation is likely to be. There are no uh, absolute rules for what constitute a relative advantage. It depends on the uh, particular perceptions and needs of the user group. The second point uh, compatibility with existence values and practices it is the the degree to which an innovation is pursued is being consistent with the uh, with the values past experiences and needs of potential adopters it is like an idea that is uh, uh, incompatible with with their values norms and practices will not be adopted as rapidly is an innovation that is compatible. The third point is a uh, simplicity and, and ease of use. Simplicity and ease of use is the degree to which an innovation is pursued is difficult to understand and use. New ideas that are uh, simpler to understand are 
uh, adopted more rapidly than innovations that require the adopters to develop new skills and understanding. The fourth point is triability. Triability uh, is the degree to which an innovation can be experimented with on a limited basis. An innovation that is uh, triable represents less uncertainty to the individual who is considering it. The last uh, uh, approach is the observable results. Observable results means that the easier it is for individuals to see the results of an innovations, the more likely they are to adopt it. Visible results lower our certainty and also stimulate peer discussion of a new idea as friends and neighbors of an adopter often request information about it. Next, uh, the E.M. Roger uh, uh, present uh, different qualities. Different qualities determined that uh, the variation and the adaptation of new products. So, these qualities make a valuable checklist to frame focus group discussions or project evaluations. They can, uh, they can also help identify weaknesses to be addressed when improving products or variables. Like the, the reinvention uh, is a key principle in diffusion of innovations. The success of innovation depends uh, on how well it evolves to meet the, the needs of more and more demanding and uh, risk averse individuals in a population. Like the history of a, of a mobile phone is a perfect example. A good way to achieve uh, this is to make like uh, users into partners is a continuous process of redevelopment like computer game companies, for pharmaceutical corporations and uh, also the uh, rural research institutes. Are th these are the examples of organizations that seek to make users active partners in improving innovations by supporting users, uh, communities or by applying uh, participative actions or research techniques. Many co computer games are now built with the intention that they will be modified by the enthusiastic users. They are actually participating in the design of the game. These consumers are really passionate about the game. It's uh, almost like a cult. The conceptions of reinvention is important because it tells us that no product or process can, can, uh, can rest on it. The second quality which E.M. Uh, e. Roger presented, it's important insight that uh, uh, impersonal marketing methods like advertising and media stories may spread information about new innovations, but it's uh, uh, conversations that spread adaptation. You could ask that why? Uh, because the adaptation of new products or behaviors involves uh, the management of risks and our sanctity. It's usually only people we personally know and trust and who we know have uh, successfully adopted the innovation themselves, who can, who can give us uh, credible resources that our attempts to change wouldn't uh, result in embarrassment. Uh, humiliation, uh, waste of time or financial loss. Uh, understanding the needs of different uh, user segments, diffusion researchers believe that a population can be broken into five different segments based on their uh, propensity to adopt a specific innovations like innovators, early adopters, early majorities, late majorities and laggards these points I already discussed it. So when thinking about these groups do not imagine it's your job to shift people from one segment to another. It doesn't work that way. It's the best to think of the of the membership of each segment as a static. 
innovations spread when they evolve to meet the needs of uh, successive segments. You should also know that the adaptation process begins with a tiny number of visionary uh, imaginative innovators. They often lavish great time, energy and creativity on developing new ideas. Now the question is that how to work with innovators. Here I will suggest for you that uh, track them down and become their first followers providing support and publicity for their ideas. I think it's enough for today. If you have any question, you can ask me directly uh, and you can also give me your feedback through KCMS account. So uh, good luck uh, and have a great time. Thank you so much.